Welcome ninjas. Welcome to the Coda Dojo. How is everyone doing today? Welcome Blake. Welcome Crazy Kid. Welcome Richard. Lovely to have everyone here today. So as always, we're gonna just wait for a few minutes. Oh. Oh no. We're gonna wait just for a few minutes to get to wait for everyone to get here. I'm gonna see if I can get a decent score in Flappy Bird. Oh Is everyone psyched to make Flappy Bird today? Oh okay, this is the best I've done so far. So simple, yeah, so it, ah, oh, eight. So how's everyone been keeping? Oh no. Hope the stream quality is going okay. You guys can all see what's going on. Oh, let's see if I can get more than eight. I've been thinking it might be worth um, starting these a little bit um, later, just to, if uh, 3.30 is a bit too early. Um, oh. Just looking at chat now. Oh no, crazy kid, your cat died. Oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, Blake, your dog died as well three weeks ago? Man, I am sorry to hear that. It is tough when pets die. It is really tough. Well, I hope that we can play some, we can make some Flappy Bird and then play some Flappy Bird. And hopefully that makes us feel better for a little while. Oh. Sometimes a good distraction can be useful. Oh man. I think the trick with this is to hover close to the bottom of the opening. Hello, William Doro Gaming. How have you been keeping? Ah, oh, I got to nine, finally. Broke my record. Today's session should be a really uh, straightforward one, actually. A lot of what we're gonna be doing today should be nice and quick and easy. So we should be able to have some time to play some games at the end Maybe see who can get the highest high score. Oh, you're coding on tablet. Uh, is that is is that normally what you code on, or is that a new development today, William? Oh. All right. Well, while we're waiting for people to arrive, let's see if I can break nine as the high score. I'm going too high. I need to hover lower. There we go. Ah. Oh. What was your cat's name, crazy kid? Is always rough. Oh. I'm getting worse now. 
oh, this is what always happens. You get onto a good streak, and then you start dying, and then you keep dying. Thank you very much for the reminder, William. Uh, not William, Blake, about the welcome sign. I will try, I will not forget it today. All right, good. There's some extra people trickling in now, so that's nice. Um, okay. So, um, what I'll do is um, I'll give the uh, little talk at the beginning um, like we normally do. So, if you can, um, set up with two screens. Um, make sure that you've got, uh, or yeah, if possible, try and set up with two screens so that there's one screen with me on it so that you can see what I'm doing and you have one screen um, to uh, do your coding on. If you're using the same screen, it can be a bit tricky. So if you can, try and set up with two screens, a TV and an iPad, uh, an iPad and a laptop, that kind of thing. Okay, uh, other thing is remember not to spam in chat. Spamming in chat is when you type the same thing over and over and over and over again, so don't do that in chat. Um, and also uh, keep things clean, so no swearing in chat. Um, and everyone use the online version of Scratch if possible. Um, and in fact, the other thing that we should do is we should also share our projects um, really super early so that it's easier for us to check our work. Gonna give it just a few more minutes. Usually give everyone about 10 minutes just to get in. What I've been, um, at first I was uh, not sure if we'd be going back to school after the school holidays, but it looks like everyone will be going back to school after the school holidays. So it might be worth, um, I'm wondering, maybe starting these a little bit later. How do you guys go with um, getting, obviously it's school holidays now, but like during school time, can you generally get home at about 3.30? Or is it a bit of a struggle um, to get home and ready for the stream by 3.30? Mm. So close. This game is frustrating, but addictive. Um, okay, so let's uh, make a bit of a start. We're about 10 minutes in now, so that should be enough time for everyone to have hopefully um, gotten in. Um, so what we'll do is we will head to the Scratch website um, if you haven't used Scratch before, then just say so in the chat and I'll give you some extra, some extra help. Um, so to get to the Scratch website, you just go to Google, you type in Scratch. At least 340 would be good. Oh, oh at least 340 will do for the amount of time that we've left it, yeah. Um, Blake, no problems. All right, so to get to Scratch, you go to Google, you type in Scratch, as in scratched by a cat, um, and then you click on Scratch Imagine Program Share. That's the one that we want. And then you go up to Create here. If you already have a Scratch account, then make sure you're logged in. Um, let's give this a name. Flappy Bird. And everyone, uh, click on the orange share button uh, at the top and to the left a little bit. Everyone click on that button now um, so that we can see 
uh, your project. Um, and so that if you need help, um, I'll be able to look it up for you. All right, so. First things first. Let's, oh yes, and the other thing that I, I need to mention is um, if you need help with your project, um, make sure your project is shared. Um, if it's not shared, I can't see it. Um, um, and make sure that your uh, account is public. Again, otherwise I won't be able to see it. And write into chat. Oh, the welcome sign. Yes, thanks, Blake. Um, but yeah, and write into chat. Um, that um, my project isn't working and my scratch name is. I'm probably getting a bit better at remembering people's scratch names, but I'm still terrible at it. Uh, so just write your scratch name into chat so that I can find you. Okay. Um, so, um, and then when I'm helping people, follow along um, as I'm helping them because the help that I'm giving them might help you with your project. Or I might not be able to see what the problem is, but you guys might be able to see what the problem is. Um, so yeah, we get to collaborate and uh, work together to fix problems. Um, okay, that is everything. Those are all the things I need to say before we start the session. So I think it's time to start. All right, so first thing that we need to do is we need to delete this uh, cat sprite. So everyone follow me. Uh, we're all going to uh, go to the middle right of our screen where it's there's a cat sprite that says sprite one and you want to click on that little X to delete the cat sprite. Okay. Um, and then what we need to do is we're going to, need to make a pipe sprite. Now, there's a pretty specific way that we're going to make these pipes, okay? Uh, they're like Mario pipes, aren't they? Uh, the Flappy Bird pipes. They're, they look like the same pipes that Mario can go down. Uh, they're nice and easy to draw. We're going to draw one now. Um, so let's go down to the bottom right corner. Hover over the cat face, choose a sprite, go up to paint where my mouse is now in the bottom right corner and click that. So now we should have a new sprite that we're going to paint. Um, so what we need to do is uh, give this a name. Uh, we need to name this uh, pipe or pipes. So we give our, our sprite a name just, uh, just above where all the sprites are in the bottom right corner. There should be a thing that says sprite and then like sprite one or something like that. Uh, you want to highlight where it says sprite one and rename it pipes. Okay, um, so now what we want to do is we want to chain, we want to draw a pipe and what we're gonna do is uh, so we're going to go to the, uh, the rectangle tool. So that's this tool here on the left in the middle, just to the left of the drawing area. Um, I'm going to make my pipes green so it looks like the original Flappy Bird. So you can change the fill of your squares here. I'm going to make mine a bit of a darker green. So when you've got a, when you've got a color that you like. Now, I want you to do this with me. Uh, we're gonna make a pipe that's pretty much nearly the whole length um, of the screen. We're gonna make it fairly narrow. So we want it to be about like this, okay? Um, and then what we're gonna do is we're going to do another little triangle just at one end to give it that little Mario pipe look, like that. Okay, just a really tiny triangle. So that's all you need, right? 
Uh, once everyone has that, what we're going to do is we're going to copy this. So you go up to the Select tool, top left corner of all the, of all the drawing tools, the little mouse icon, where it, if you hover over it, it says Select. We're going to select these. And once they're selected, um, you, can, you can press Copy here, um, just in the sort of, uh, just above the uh, drawing area. There's a button that says Copy. Um, or the other way to do that is you can hold down control on your keyboard and press C. And then you'll notice that the paste symbol becomes available. It was grayed out before. So what we're going to do is we're going to paste, and then we're going to just drag off this. So we should now have two identical pipes, right? The next thing that we need to do is we need to flip this. Uh, this one that we've got highlighted, we want to flip it vertically. Um, so that just in the top right of the drawing area, just above the drawing area, we have something called flip vertical. Click that for me once. And now you should have two pipes, one that's, uh, and sort of they're both kind of, uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, opposite sides. So now what we need to do is we need to select both of the rectangles, um, as in we want to select one pipe at a time, but both of the rectangles that make up that pipe. We want to make a bit of a gap like this. And we're going to be putting a lot of it, of the, uh, of the pipe, off of, the, off, of, off of screen and try and make them so that they're nicely lined up. Yeah, that looks about right. Now, what we're actually doing is we're kind of abusing a particular peculi peculiarity of Scratch, whereby it will keep track of the rectangles that are outside of the drawing area. So if you look at my mouse now, can you see that we've got these rectangles actually go outside of the drawing area? Um, Scratch remembers uh, or knows that they're there. And that's going to be important later. So this is what you should have now. Is everyone with me? Everyone, everyone's going OK? Um, now, one other thing as well, don't try and change the size of this sprite. I'm going to say that again. Do not try to change the size over on the, the size setting here of this sprite because we've just made a sprite that's bigger than the screen. And if we try and change the size, it will shrink it down so that it fits better on screen, which will mess up how this sprite works, because we want it to be bigger than the screen, because it's going to move up and down. All right, so hopefully you're all, you're all with me. Um, so what we will do is, once everyone's ready to go, once we've done this drawing, we're going to go across to the code. All right, so um, what we're going to do now is we're going to put in some code that makes some clones of these pipes. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to first, we need to go to events, the yellowy category on the left. And we need to grab a when green flag clicked. Drag out that code. I'll make this a bit bigger. There we go. Should be able to see my code a bit better now. And what we're going to do is underneath that, we're going to create a forever loop. Uh, forever is in control, the orangey category on the left. I'm going to drag that block out and connect it up just like a Lego. All right. So we should just have a simple code now, when green flag clicked and forever and nothing in it. All right. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to make this um, uh, sprite move up and down um, on the right 
side of the screen. Uh, so what we're going to do is we want this sprite. So you can see, you can see, can you see how this works? We can move the sprite up and down because it's like it's larger than it should be. Like if you if you're looking at my screen now, you should be able to see how we're able to move this sprite up and down. Um, so what we want is we want the this sprite here to make clones of itself. only on this right side at a random height. So we're going to make it go to... Now, what should our x value be if we want the pipe to be over here? Write your answers in chat now. All right, everyone get your, everyone get your answers in. What should our x value be if our sprite is all the way over here to the right? Uh, I hope you've got your answers in now. Oh, Blake, yes. Um, we'll, we'll look at your help milk game at the end because this one should be a nice simple um, game to code. Um, so, so yeah, um, we can actually do that at the end of this session if you like. So I hope you've got your answers in to chat because the answer is, I'm going to say 250. Now, if you put 240 or 239, that's really close. So you're probably, that's just about right. Um, but basically, we want it to be as off screen as it can be. I'm going to say 250, which is technically 10 pixels off of the screen, because the screen only goes up to 240. But we'll see how far it goes out, because it's going to start always here. Now, with our height, we want it to be variable. So what, um, what do we need to put into Y to make it change up and down? How do we introduce a little bit of chaos to our game? Put your answers in chat. All right. So, the what we need is we need pick random. Pick random is in operators, the green category on the left. We need to get a pick random and put it inside the Y slot. So it should slot right in there. So now Y should should say pick random one to ten. But we don't want this to be 1 to 10. Um, what um, uh, coordinates do we want? Um, what I'm going to, well, I'll tell you if you like. Um, I found negative 100 as the lowest value and positive 100 to be really good. Um, so let's just hit go, and you'll see about how high the pipe gets and how low the pipe gets. Now, if you wanted to make the pipe not go as low, what number would you change? And what would you change it to? If you wanted the pipe to go not as high, then what number would you, would you change? And if you wanted the pipe to go wider, to go lower, and to go higher, how would you change the numbers that way? Write your answers in chat. Hope you've got your answers in. So think about it this way. When we pick a random number, we put in first the lowest number, and then the highest number. So if we want this to go lower, we have to make this number lower. It's a minus number. So what's lower, negative 90 or negative 100? The answer is negative 100, because 
Uh, hopefully you've done a bit of minus numbers in, in, in maths so far, but if you want it to go lower, you could set it to minus 110 if you wanted, and then it would go much lower. If you said minus 180, you'd see it go really low sometimes. But I think that's a bit too low. So I'm just going to stick with minus 100 to 100, and that pipe is not going to be going too low and too high. All right. Okay. So what we're going to need now, oh, can you send a link? Is that, um, so what's the, what's the, oh, the link for this game? Sure. See project page. All right. There you go. So you should have access to my game, my code now. Um, and um, my little pipe drawings. So what we need now is we need to create some clones. Um, so let's go to uh, control, the orangey category on the left, and let's grab create clone of myself. And then, because this is happening too fast, we're going to put in a wait. And so if you're in control, that's still where you need to be. Grab wait one second. And I think two seconds is a really good amount of time to wait. But so let's hit play now. And we should see it slowly going up and down and making clones of itself. But the clones are not moving yet. So. What next piece of code do we need to do to start getting the codes moving? Write your answers in chat. Hope you've got them in, because the answer is when I start as clone. Still in the control category, so we're still in the right place. So let's start a new uh, sequence of code here, when I start as clone. Okay, um, then what do we need? Uh, what line of code do we need to make the blocks move left? Write your answer in chat. Yes. Ah, you got that answer in chat really fast. I wonder if, hmm, interesting. Ah, yeah, so that's good. So what we need is, let's, let's go to control because we need to do this a certain number of times. When these clones move left, do we want them to move forever? No, we only want them to move until they get to the other side of the screen. Then we want them to delete. What happens if we don't delete our clones? Eventually, Scratch will stop making them. Uh, it will fill up and have too many clones and it will stop making clones. We don't want that, so we need to kill our clones. Um, so we need a repeat until. Um, so we're still in the right place in control. Get a repeat until. What do we want them to do in the repeat until? We want them to change x. Um, x is left and right, y is up and down. Um, so yes, quite right. Um, so we want to and I found a good speed when I was doing this before was minus five. You can change this if you want. You can make them faster or slower. And we want to do this until, as William Dora Gaming has said, so our until, we need to go to um, operators. We need a less than. We need to go to motion, so less than is the arrow pointing away from the 50. 
we need to go to motion, the dark blue category, and we need to scroll down and get one of these round X positions, drag that into the first slot in our less than, uh, X position, less than, and then if over here, the X is like 240 is the furthest it gets on screen, then let's say when it gets to less than minus 239, because then when it hits minus 240, that's the edge of the screen, it'll delete itself. Or we haven't put that in yet, but we will. Um, so the other thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna put our, our score code in here as well. Um, so let's go to variables and which is the dark orange category on the left. Let's click on this gray button, which is in the top left saying make a variable and let's call this score. Make sure that for all sprites is selected and let's change and let's put this right as so we want to change my variable by one we want to grab this change my variable by one and put it right underneath the repeat until so it's right on the very bottom of this uh, whole sequence and we want to change where it says my variable to score okay um, so then what we need to do is, let's do something we haven't done yet. Let's do a sound. Um, so let's take a break from the code and add in a sound effect. To do that, you need to put the sound into the sprite. So let's go up to um, the top left corner. You should have a button that says sounds. Click on that. So far, it only starts us off with one sound, which is our pop sound. Um, actually, is that loud, guys? If I hit when I hit play, are you getting that from my computer? Tell me if it's a bit loud. I might be able to make it quieter. Um, so, to add in new sounds is very similar to adding in new costumes. At the bottom left corner, there's a button that says "Choose a sound." Um, so, click on that. And what you can do is if you hover over um, the play button of any of these sounds, it will play for you. Um, and you can look up categories here. You can do searches for sounds. Um, I'm going to click on effects. Um, now I can, so yeah, we've got a, a few different possibilities. But I really liked a really kind of classic sort of video game sound, which was called coin. I really like this one. It sounds like the Mario coin, um, I think. So once you're happy, you click on the sound that you want. And now this sound is in your sprite. You've now got two sounds, pop and coin. Um, so what we're gonna do now is we're gonna play this sound. Um, so go back up to the top left corner once you've gotten the sound that you want and click on code. Oh yeah. Uh, let me try something. So you probably, you should be able to hear it now, although it's coming out of, um, you might be being picked up by the microphone. We'll see. Um, so, once we've chosen the sound that we like, um, what we need to do is go back to our code, look at, looking at the when I start as a clone code, and let's go up to the sound category, which is kind of like a purple sound, purple, kind of pinky purple. Click on that one and look for start sound coin. 
if you might have start sound something else. So if you drag start sound out, uh, put it right underneath where it says change score by one, click on the white triangle, and you should be able to uh, select something else. So yeah, I'm gonna choose coin, I like coin. Okay, um, so what we need to do now is uh, delete the clone, because we've done everything that we wanted to do here. So let's delete the clone. Let's go to control, the RNG category on the left, look for the code, delete this clone at the bottom and put that on the very bottom. You'll notice that there's literally nothing we can put on the bottom of delete this clone because any code that we can try and run is, can't be run because the clone is gone. There's nothing to run the code. The clone is dead. All right, so it has been deleted. So let's hit go and see if this works. This looks good. I mean, it's a bit easy right now <laughs> because we have no Flappy Bird to use. But yeah, the pipes are moving around. Yeah, they're going up and down. I'm pretty happy with that. All right, let's hit stop. Now, what do we need to do with our score variable at the very beginning of the game? If I hit the, if, watch closely, if I hit go again, what happens to our score? Our score is 12 and I hit go, and the score is still 12 because it remembers what score we were last time. And we don't want that. We want each game to start with a new score. So, what do we need to do? So, Blake, it won't delete it. Do you, so have you put the delete this clone on the very bottom of when I start as clone? Is that what you've got? Ah, also, what does your repeat until say, Blake, um, in your code, where underneath where it says when I start as clone, what does it say repeat until? Because if you put minus 240, it's not going to work because the clones can't go off screen and 240 is the edge of the screen. So it needs to be what, I, um, what, uh, what mine says, which is less than minus 239. All right. Ah, uh, yeah. So, Blake, your, your problem is you need to your repeat until needs to be X position less than minus 239. Let me explain why this happens. Uh, so here's something simple. What's lower? Um, so if I, if I ask you the question, so you have uh, minus 240. Um, what's a lower number than minus 240? Um, while, while you're thinking about that, what is, if I were to ask you, is minus 240 lower than minus 240? What's the answer? Yes or no? Write your answers in chat. Is minus, minus 240 less than minus 240? Same code. Uh, 
So there's only one thing that I can think of that might be causing that, and that's, oh, um, your sprites aren't in the middle. Um, so let's try, okay, Blake. So do you remember where the middle of the um, sprite is? Uh, it's this crosshairs in the middle here. So try doing it like this. So you need your, let's try that now. There we go. So remember, um, if you, so if you, if, so Blake, if you select all of your pipe sprites, um, and drag them, it will give you the center, and you just need to like click it into the middle. Because your, your, your sprites are off to the left, so it wasn't, it wasn't uh, centered properly. Okay, give that a try, Blake. Um, I, just give, I, I, just tr I just did that, and it looks like it's working okay now. There we go. Cool. All right. Um, so, yeah, just just to quickly finish this this up, it's got to be minus two hundred and thirty nine uh, because we're asking less than. If the, it, um, uh, less than minus two hundred and thirty nine is minus two hundred and forty, if the sprite can't. Um, reach minus 241, and it often can't because the technically the edge of the screen is minus 240. Technically, the screen doesn't go any higher than that, any lower than that. Then it can just get stuck. I found that with some of my projects. This, is, this might seem a little bit confusing because Scratch is very strange with what it considers to be outside of the screen and inside of the screen. Sometimes it lets you place things far off outside of the screen, and sometimes it doesn't. Uh, I've been very confused by it. Like, uh, technically, nothing exists outside of 240, but look at my, this sprite here. This sprite here is technically at like uh, 243 or something. So very weird, the way that that works. Anyway, um, so how's everyone going so far? Everyone's following me? Um, uh, if you, oh, we've got a few extra viewers. So if you need to know where we're up to, uh, this is where we're up to so far. So if you just click on that, that gives you all the code we've made so far. Today's um, a fairly um, yeah we've got a, we've got we've got a bit of extra time today because um, this should be a nice simple easy game. All right, <laughs> crazy kid, you've reached three thousand six hundred plus score. Very good. <laughs> but to stop that from happening, we need to uh, set our score back to zero each time that we start the game. Um, so, to do that, um, what we need to do is go to variables. Um, we need to set my variable to zero, and we need this to happen at the beginning of the game. So what do we put it underneath? Write your answers in chat now. Hope you got your answers in, because the answer is we put it underneath when the green flag clicked. And we don't want it to be setting my variable to zero. We click on this white triangle next to where it says my variable. We click on score. Set score to zero. Welcome, Pratik o Oja. Oja? I probably butchered your name there. Sorry about that. Have you done Scratch before? Hopefully, hopefully you're able to follow along. 
I was just saying at the beginning of the session, maybe I need to start these a little bit later, give everyone a bit of time to get to get in. Although that being said, it's school holidays right now, isn't it still? So maybe it wouldn't help. <laughs> All right. Okay, so we should have set score to zero. Um, right underneath where when green flag clicked. All right, so now when we start the game, it should start off at score zero. We've got our pipes working. Um, our pipe should be deleting, and each time they delete, they increase our score by one, and we might even even have a cute little sound effect. Yeah, good, got our pipes working, excellent. Okay, um, so what we need to do now is we need to add our flappy bird. Um, let's... Good, excellent. All right, so um, we're going to do movement in a bit of an interesting way today. Um, so uh, what we're going to do is first we need to choose our Flappy Bird sprite. Um, so I'm going to choose the inbuilt bird one. Um, so if you come to the bottom right corner of the screen, click on the cat face that says choose a sprite. Um, and I'm just going to type in bird. You can choose whichever one you like. I'm going to choose the parrot one. Oh, toucan. Oh, no, I'm definitely choosing this toucan. Nice. Oh, this is great. Love it. Okay. So, uh, we need to make this toucan uh, or your bird much smaller. Uh, let's try 30, shall we? Yeah, that might be okay. All right, um, so what we need to do now, uh, oh, so to change the size of the sprite, if you don't know, right middle of the screen. So on the right in the middle, should have something saying size, it'll say 100, let's change that to 30. Okay, so let's, uh, do some, let's do some code to move the Flappy Bird sprite. Um, so we let's go to events, get uh, a when green flag clicked, drag that out. Um, then what we need to do is we need to decide when, where our bird should start. So let's say the top left corner Figure out roughly where you want that to be. I'm gonna say... Maybe that's... That seems okay. Um, so I'm going to say that's where my bird starts. Uh, so you go to motion, the top left uh, corner of the screen, the dark blue category, and you grab a line of code that says go to X and then a number, Y and then a number. The numbers that I've got, um, X is minus 176 and Y is one, two, three. But you can change this if you like. Um, you could change it just to a slightly more round number. Um, then what we need to do is we need to put underneath this a forever loop. So let's go to control. Let's grab a forever. And then what we're going to do is we're going to make a variable that controls our full speed. So which direction controls up and down? Is it X or is it Y? Write your answers in chat now. And then once you've got your answers in, come across with me to variables. 
like we did before with the score, click on make a variable. So what we need is y move. We're going to call this variable y move, as in uh, the letter y and then move. Make sure for all sprites is clicked. And this variable is going to control if our bird is moving up or down. Um, so what we're going to do, and I, you can have a, a tweak of these numbers um, to see what it does. These are the numbers that I found worked pretty well. Um, have a bit of a play with these numbers um, and see what they do, or see if you can figure out what they will do first. Because um, it's interesting, this is all very useful. What we want to do is we want to change my variable by one, but we're gonna we're gonna change this. So we get the piece of code change my variable by one, but we want to change the y move. And we want this to be changed by minus 0 0.6. This is going to make us fall. And not only is it gonna make us fall, it's going to make us speed up as we fall. Um, so then what we need to do is we need to go to the top left corner to motion. Um, we need to uh, change y by, it says 10 right now, but we're going to change that. So go to motion, grab change y by 10, and then go back to the category variables. And what we're going to do is we're going to grab our y move category, uh, variable, sorry. We're going to grab our y move variable, the sort of circle one in the top left corner here. It's going to fit just nicely in our change y. Okay. Um, so now what we're going to do is we're going to put in underneath this an if statement. So... Do you remember where we get ifs from? Which category, which category do we get them from? Hope you've got your answers in chat. Because the answer is control, the orangey category on the left. Um, then we're going to need to go to the light blue category, sensing. And we're going to get a key space pressed. And put it. And you can see it's kind of a diamond shape, and it fits just nicely in this kind of diamondy shape. Not strictly a diamond, I know, hexagon, but I'd think of it as like a jewel, a jewel shape, a rupee shape, uh, right inside our if then statement. So now we should have if key space pressed, then, and then what we're going to do is we're going to go back to variables. We're going to grab a set my variable to zero put that inside the if, and we're going to change my variable to y move and change the zero to six. Okay, so let's test that. Let's see if it works. So now what you've got is this very characteristic thing where in Flappy Bird, the longer that you fall, the faster that you fall. It's not always predictable. Are you guys with me? It looks like I lost connection over OBS there for a moment. So I think I lost connection over OBS there for a moment. That's uh, my streaming software. Um, so I'll just make sure we're all up to speed. So we should have all this code to control the falling and flying of our bird, our flappy bird. I'm just going to turn off the sound for now of mine. All right, how's everyone going? Uh, clone for me. 
Y control, it won't save. Oh, very strange, William. Okay. So yeah, I'm just looking at the stream that you guys are receiving, which is slightly delayed from what I'm sending, and it looks like my connection only disappeared for a little while. So hopefully that's okay. Um, okay, if, if, any, if any more was lost, you guys just let me know. Um, is everyone up to this point now? We've got our flappy bird moving up and down, We've got our variable working, and you can see this Y move variable, how rapidly it changes so that you sort of fall faster. And this is the secret to why Flappy Bird is such a compelling game, because the movement's really interesting. It's such a simple game. But um, if we didn't use uh, sort of this accelerating movement, it would be so much easier, because it would be so much easier to predict. OK. So now we need to create two more bits of code. One, so that we lose the game when we touch a pipe, and two, so we lose the game if we touch the bottom of the screen. Okay? So, let's add those in now. So you should have your code that looks about like this. We want to now add another if into our forever loop. So grab another if from the control category, and we're going to do if touching. Uh, touching mouse pointer is what it will say at the uh, at first. In, and that's in the sensing category, light blue. If touching mouse pointer, but we want to change that to if touching pipes. And then we're going to, just for now, we're going to just uh, go to control and grab a stop all. Um, now you, could, you can create a more elaborate game over screen that triggers um, once uh, you touch a pipe. Um, for now, we're just going to stop all. Um, okay. So then what we need is we need, after this, a piece of code that detects if we have touched the bottom of the screen. Now, if you were paying attention to how we did the code for the pipes touching the left side of the screen, first of all, uh, yeah, and, and if you've been paying attention in previous sessions, what do we need in our if statement to detect if our Flappy Bird has touched the bottom of the screen. So we need to grab our if statement. Write your answers in chat, everyone. We need an if then. We need to go to operators and grab a less than. We need to put it inside the if then. Then we need to go to motion, the dark blue category, and grab a Y position near the bottom of that category, put it in the first of the two slots in our less than. And then we need minus 179. The edge of the screen is 180 at the top and minus 180 on the bottom. So we need to always make sure that we're detecting, if you get to the edge of the screen, it needs to be less than 179. Okay. Um, then um, we're just gonna do the same thing. We're just gonna get another stop all to happen if we touch the bottom of the screen. Uh, so, let's see if that works. Ah. Now, something weird just happened there in my game. Let's see if I... Oh. Ah. 
So if your flappy bird is not dying when you touch the bottom of the screen like mine is, change this number to be higher. Let's try minus 178. Remember, it's a minus number. Let's try minus 177. Interesting. What about minus? Ah, oh, yeah, there we go. Now, what's happening here is our Y move is getting really, really crazy. Our Y move is very, very crazy. So what do we need to do with all of our variables? Almost all of them. At the very beginning of the game, we need to set them to a default value. So where do we put? We're going to put a set y move variable to zero. So we go across to variables, the orangey category. We look for set my variable to zero. We want this to be not my variable. We want it to be y move. That's the variable that controls if our bird is falling or, f or going up, if it's going up or down. We we'll set it to zero, and we're going to put it right underneath when green flag clicked. OK? If you do touching edge, uh, crazy kid, that is possible. But it will mean that when you touch the top edge, you also die. So that's up to you. I fixed it by just saying if y position is less than minus 175. And that seems to work OK for me. How's everyone else go with the uh, falling? Does, the, does, does your game end when the bird falls to the bottom of the screen? Not working. What's not working specifically? William Doro. Oh, wow, got to 4.30 already, goodness. Okie dokie. Now, William Doro, is that Darpy Darp? Oh, interesting, Blake. Let's have a look. Uh, let's have a look. Uh, there's a possibly a few. Um, what was your um, scratch name again, William? Uh, I'll try and look you up. It's taking a while to load, isn't it? The internet must be struggling right now. I wonder. Hmm. Very odd. Oh, it's because you added music into it. That's why it's taking forever to load. Maybe. You said you put a soundtrack. Goodness. It's really taking a while. All right, while that's doing that, Oh, wait, here we go. I should just look at that page. All right, Darpy Darp. Uh, there's three different, there's three different flappy birds. This one. See inside. Uh, hmm. I don't see the Flappy Bird sprite. Have you clicked File Save recently? Is this the right one? View all. Ah, 
Ah, uh, you were saying that you had problems making it save. Um, do you know what the reason might be is because you've got already projects named the same? Try naming it something different. Try, try naming it like Flappy Bird this one. Yeah, that's just an empty project. And this one doesn't have... This one's a remix of my one. Um, okay, so... All right, this one's working now. See inside. You don't have any code. Um, Blake, you don't have any code in your Flappy Bird yet. As everyone, maybe everyone just right now click File, Save. Uh, it should just be like a File, Save now. Make sure that your game is saved because I might be looking at old versions of them. Alrighty, I'll refresh. See if that helps. All right. Oh yeah, looking at the stream, definitely getting a bit of lag, I think. Um, okay. Oh, there we go. Right. Okay. Maybe... So let's see, if touching pipes... Maybe make your pipes a little, they're very wide, these pipes. Try making them a little bit narrower. Let's see if that fixes it. Also, your flappy bird is pretty big. Oh, your clones aren't deleting. Uh, all right. Try changing... The repeat until um, Blake try changing the repeat until um, to minus two three uh, seven then make it so that the clones delete themselves a bit faster. Looking at your costumes, oh. Also, I think it might be your costumes as well. Because when I click on that, it's like, hmm, it's like it's larger. Yeah, if you hadn't chosen this costume, Blake, like if I can, Uh, 
Um, it might be to do with the, um, the fact that you've imported this Flappy Bird image. Um, it's, can you see, like, when I click on it, it seems to be really big. So I think that this Flappy Bird image is like, it's, it's like if it's colliding too close to the edge. Yeah, that's what I would guess. So yeah, the problem is, is the image. If you change the costume to something else that doesn't have this problem here. So I'm not sure why um, the collision is so far out on these images, but you can see this, right? Like what I can see. When I click on it, it's selected like all this empty space around Flappy Bird. So that's really strange. Um, that I think all of that stuff I think is colliding with the pipes. So, so like all this sort of empty space here. That's what's happening with yours, with yours, um, with yours, Blake. Um, try for now just swapping to an inbuilt costume from scratch. Just like one of the bird costumes. See if that, see if that helps. All right. Um, so. Let's have a look-see. Darpy Darp. View all. I hope you saved your game. Oh, yeah. Good, good. Ah, this one's based on mine, I think. So, yeah. First project, no save. So... Flappy Bird game with Mario music. Yeah, so I'm not sure which project you need me to check out, Darpy Darp. Um, you, you probably need to give it like a name specifically so that I can find it um, and then write it into chat. I'll have a quick look. How's everyone else gone? Um, that last bit of time really disappeared on me. So the game's working. Um, and that's all the time we have for it now. But what I want to do is just show you some little improvements that we can make. Um, not in detail, but I, wanna, I want you to have a... Uh, what I'll do is I'll publish this version um, of Flappy Bird, my, my other version... Um, this one here. And you guys can have a look at it. And you can see... What things have I put into this game that we didn't get a chance to do in our, in our other one? One of the things, actually, that Blake did that was pretty cool was um, the Flappy Bird, um, like, uh, changed costumes. And you can see this one does the same when you flap, the wings flap. The, what else can you notice about the background? So in the background, you can see that there are clouds. Now, are the clouds moving at the same speed as the pipes? I actually use pretty much the same code to make the clouds. Um, the only things that I changed was I removed the stuff that um, made them give you points and made noises, like there was, so there's no little blings, and I made it so that the clouds appeared higher and lower. Uh, actually, no, no, mostly higher not and, and not too low. Um, I gave the game a blue background. Oh, wow, high score, 20. And that's the other thing. Yeah, of course, the moment I notice I die, I put in a high score. So um, you should have a working game now. Put in just a simple blue backdrop and then try to see if you can figure out how I did my cloud um, uh, code. I'm going to share Flappy Bird improved. I'm going to pop it into chat now.
Okay, yeah, Blake. I can see that the image you got had um, green around it. Yeah, I'm not sure why it's still registering. It's a bit odd, isn't it? That's maybe just a graphical graphical problem. Um, so the other so the so the other thing that I did with the improved version was I just put in this piece of simple code here to make it so that the uh, it, so that the bird flaps. The reason that I did this code separately um, by itself here, the code that switches the costumes, is I didn't want it this wait to create a delay between everything else. Because if you put a wait into your forever loop, suddenly now your character becomes a lot less responsive because there's this point in time where everything freezes for like 0.1 of a second, which is very frustrating and feels really bad. So I put this piece of code over here whenever space key pressed switches the costume. Um, the cloud, the cloud um, code is exactly the same as the pipe code. All I did was added in different costumes for different clouds and a simple line of code that switches the costume to a random um, number. And I also made it so that these clouds move a lot slower than the pipes. And this is, creates what's called a parallax effect. Because now if you look at it, it looks like the pipes are closer to you than the clouds, right? So a lot of old video games like um, Super Nintendo games and Mega Drive games, they um, all use parallaxing. So that is things further away from you move across the screen slower than things closer to you. So have a bit of a play. See if you can do something similar. Um, parallaxing looks really cool. Immediately like this, it makes you feel like you're up in the air, up in the sky somewhere, inexplicably trying to fly through pipes. Um, if you're having problems, notice how tiny my bird is and notice uh, that I've given myself quite a nice big gap between the pipes and the pipes are very narrow. Um, try, make sure that there's that. Also in this version, I think, yeah, in this version, the, the, uh, the bird's not quite so close to the left hand of the screen. So yeah, you could, you could try um, changing some of that so that the bird's a little, a little bit more towards the middle of the screen as well. Um, absolutely, yeah. Oh, wow, we've run way over time. Goodness. Oh, yes, Pratik, Pratik, if you're still around, um, let us know what your Scratch name is and we'll, um, we'll uh, friend you on Scratch. Um, and uh, yeah, that should be good. Um, all right, super quick then. Uh, I promised, I promised um, Blake that I'd quickly have a look at his game. Blake, you still around? Um, profile. Uh, infamous. Um, your help milk. All right, is this going to take forever to load? Objectives, get eggs, apples, bananas. Is it going to be super loud? That's a bit loud. Is that really loud for you guys? Okay. Press the green flag. Uh, so, does it do, does it play? Is it meant to start yet? What am I meant to press? Is that it? Okay, well, fair enough. <laughs> All right, Blake. Oh, four minutes? I can't sit and watch <laughs> just zero nine infamous. Um, just move around for four minutes, Blake. All right. Uh, let's go to <laughs> William Doro Gaming. But... Um, if you want to check out Blake's um, uh, animation, is it an animation, Blake? Is it a game or is it an animation? Um, then then uh, look up Zero Nine Infamous on Scratch and you'll be able to see his games. Um, all right, so profile. Uh, duh, 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 duh. What am I looking for? Uh, Darpy Darp. 
and let's play D-pad Crossy Road. Okay, so use the D-pad to move. Don't touch the cars. Ah, oh, clever. So because Scratch works now on tablets, you can actually do this where you make um, games that work well on iPad. Uh-oh. Oh, no. And it's very, it's, and you can see how um, Darpy Dup's done this, how William's done this. He's created a little sprite for each of the um, arrows. And then all you need to do is click on them, or if you're on a tablet, you tap on them. That's really cool. I really like that. That's awesome. And you've adapted um, our Crossy Road game. Um, I th yeah, I think you've done it pretty much, like, pretty similar to the way that we've done it. Um, cool. That's very cool. All right, Catman Sim. All right, so. Um, what I'll quickly do is do a. Um, so, normally I'd spend a bit of time playing everyone's games, but we've run out of time. I thought this. <laughs> yeah, that last bit of time just completely disappeared, got away from me. So, I'm going to wrap this up. Um, so. Uh, Hopefully everyone's got their problem solved, anyone's game not working. Um, come back to this YouTube video and post your projects in the comments um, so that I can have a go of your games because um, I didn't get a chance to do them today. So if you do that, I check the YouTube comments every day. Um, uh, if you want to subscribe and ring the bell, you can get notifications of future live streams. Uh, our next stream is on Thursday, so not tomorrow, but Thursday, 3.30. We're going to be making music using Scratch. Um, leave comments, again, in the YouTube video um, for what projects you would like us to do in the future. Um, put your... Um, oh, yeah, and when you... Uh, yeah, so I've shown you some of my code. Um, if you friended me on Scratch, you'll be able to go and see um, the Flappy Bird improved. Have a bit of a look. See if you can figure out how I did it. See if you can take my code and put it in your game. Um, and uh, uh, see if you can add any other stuff as well. Um, you can add a high score. You could make the game go faster the, long the longer you've played it. Um, so yeah, improve the game and then link it in the comments of this YouTube video because I'd like to play it. Um, so... Um, as always, uh, we do these every Monday, every Tuesday, and Thursday at 3.30 p.m. Um, so thank you very much for coming. Hope you guys have had fun. Uh, I will see you on Thursday. But until then, stay awesome, be cool to each other, take care of yourselves. We'll see you later, ninjas.